Okay, this is an overview of a early eight and three quarter B body rear axle. This is going in my 1973 Plymouth Duster. Um, I ordered a disc brake kit from Inline Tube and uh, just got finished swapping it on this eight and three quarter. So this is just a little bit of an overview on how that installation went. Uh, the first thing you want to do is pop your axles out and. Uh, there's actually a little hole on the axle that you can stick your socket into and get all five of those nuts off. In the past I used to use a wrench and go from the side and didn't quite realize there was a hole there. Durr. So knowing that, that just made the whole job way easier. Um, so once you uh, pop your axles out, you know, inspect your bearings and everything, they're shot, make sure you replace them. I replaced mine with the Mopar green bearings. Uh, it has the little plate attached to the outer bearing and I had a machine shop press them on for about 40 bucks not too big of a deal um, I was thinking I was gonna be able to get away with the little spacer they provided in the kit so I could have the axle just sit in that much further on each side for uh, tire clearance to the wheel well because I'm gonna be running some pretty big tires uh, so I ran without the spacer on this side and then when I was working on this side I found out that the axle was sticking out a little bit too far and those spacers are actually needed. They take uh, place of the backing plate that would be there from the drum brake setup. So uh, with that in mind, uh, you want to also smack out four of your studs that are pressed into the axle and just keep the factory one or your old one in the bottom. And so just make sure you use these from the the parts bag. Uh, the next step is to get this bracket assembled and it's a lot easier just to assemble it uh, with it not attached to this so just like on the ground or wherever. Uh, after that just slide it right on so you got the spacer, you got the axle, and you got this mounting bracket for the caliper and you have all your spacers installed right there and then the next step is to get your rotor, use three lug nuts just to get it centered up on there. And then grab your caliper, undo these two, take the little piece of hose out they put in there to keep the brake shoes or brake pads, you know, in place so they're not moving around during shipping or whatever. Uh, once that's out of the way, you just have to jiggle this on there, make sure your uh, brake pads are centered up, they're not falling out. And then get these started in right through the bracket and just uh, snug them down. That's pretty much it for the installation on these uh, inline tube disc brakes. So this is a 323 open diff. Uh, it's going to be powered by a little 318 Magnum. So it's not going to be seeing way too much series power. It's going to be a lot better compared to the seven and a quarter that I pulled out. And I figured I'd just have some better brakes over the drums. I've done drums so many times in the past. I'm just done with it. So I'm excited to see how these guys work out. I might make another video on how to get the brake hardware, brake lines all installed. This is all I have left. Some banjo fittings, additional stuff figure that out later. So yeah, that's the overview of installing inline tube rear disc brakes on a early B-body and three-quarter rear axle.